Welcome back to our video series where we are learning how to create Minecraft worlds using Python code. In this video tutorial I'm going to show you how to create the first of the more complex structures and we're going to be building ourselves a bridge today that goes over a small body of water. It's not the best looking bridge, it's fairly simple uh, but you can get an idea of how it works. We've got some steps at either end. I'm going to do a quick fly around, you can walk over the bridge and then you've got some steps to get you back off it on the other side. The water itself is about four or five blocks deep, so if you do fall in, you will have to fly out of it, but that's basically it. I'm sure you could add a bit more to it, like handrails, maybe even some lights and whatnot to make it look a bit better. But for now, this pedestrian bridge is what we're going to be creating. So to get started on this today, you're going to need to pop over to your Python editor. Remember, we're using Mew. And you need to add in your first two lines of code that we always add in. Uh, when we are coding in Minecraft. So I just realized I had a little mistake there, I fixed. The first line of code says from mcpy.minecraft, import star. So that's just saying we're importing all the functions from the library called Minecraft. So all the little functions or snippets of code that will allow us to create Minecraft worlds with Python code. Second line of code simply connects mu up to Minecraft so the two programs talk to one another. Okay, so once we've got that out of the way, the next thing I want you to do is to dig out some code from the previous video tutorial where we cleared the world to give ourselves an empty canvas to work on. I want you to copy and paste those two lines of code in, which look a bit like that, just there. Because each time we run our program now, I want you to have an empty canvas to start with. That way we can do a bit of trial and error to make sure things are working how we want. Okay, we're going to get in the habit of using these couple of lines of code at the start of all our programs as we get into making more complex structures. Okay, so each time we run our program now, we're going to have an empty world to begin with. And after that, the next thing we need to do is get the player's current coordinates. So we can build this little bridge set up where the player is currently standing. So to do that, we might add a comment in first that just says get the player's current position and the way we get the current position is just a simple line of code where we create some variables first of all remember variables are like buckets that hold some information we've labeled these three buckets with the names X Y and Z because we are getting the players current position using the X Y and Z coordinates which are found up the top here the top left of your page in white writing we don't need to know them that the computer is going to do that for us so we need to add to this line of code that says x, y, and z equals, and we're going to put mc.player.getPos. And what that's going to do is it's going to run the getPos or the getPosition function from the Minecraft library. So it gets the player's current position in the Minecraft world, so the x, the y, and the z values, and places them into the x, the y, and the z variables, or buckets, whatever you want to call them. Okay, so now that we've got the current position, we can tell the computer to start building. So we are going to build the blue pond first of all, which is quite simple using the code that we've already learned in previous videos. We just need to write mc.setBlocks. And then in brackets, we're going to tell it what to do. So where to position this blue pond exactly. So just copy what I write here. You can always change the size of your pond a bit later on, but just copy me for now. We're going to start with x plus 2. We're going to take our current x value and just add 2 to it for our start position. We're going to do y minus 1. So where we're currently standing, we're going to drop down one block so that the pond is built into the ground, not above the ground. And then we're going to do z minus 20. So there are our three starting coordinates. That's where the pond is going to be starting to be built. What we need to do now is list three more coordinates where we'd like the pond to end. So we're going to do x plus 22, y minus 5. Remember the y is how deep the pond is, so we're going to drop it down about four blocks there. And z plus 20 to finish off with. Finally, the last number you need to put in is the number of the block ID uh, that relates to water. So if we look through the list here, we can either have water flowing or we can have water stationary. 
I'm going to stick with the stationary water. It's not going to go anywhere because it's built into the ground, but just in case, I want to make sure that I use the number nine because I don't want this water oozing out everywhere. And that's it. So we've listed our starting coordinates, our end coordinates, and the block ID for water. Uh, I probably should put a comment in here that says, build the pond. And if we give that a test run now, what we should see is an empty world appear first and then a slab of blue appear after that, which is our pond, right at our current position. So that's perfect. Next thing we need to do is build the bridge to go over the top of that pond. Okay, so there's not too much to it. Um, it just gets a little bit tedious building this bridge because we've got some steps in it. I did make it a little bit harder by adding some steps. So just copy down what I write and you can always play with the values later on to change how your bridge looks. So we'll put in a comment first that says build the bridge. And then we're going to write mc.setBlocks one more time. And we're going to start with x minus 2. And write y, z, and then x and y and z plus 5. Okay, so what we've got here is we've got x minus 2, which is basically showing the length of the step. I'll show you what that looks like in a sec. It's going to be two blocks long, and z plus 5 makes it five steps wide. Now, the final thing we need to put in is the number of the block that we're going to use to build the bridge with. So back to my block ID list, I think I just want to use stone, which is fairly straightforward. You can use stone or cobblestone maybe. Cobblestone would look pretty cool. I might try that. Number four for cobblestone is the last number I'll put in. I'll close my brackets and I'm just going to put a comment at the end here that says step one because this should be the first step in our bridge. Let's run it and have a look. It's probably going to end up right on top of us here so I'm going to have to click into Minecraft and step back a bit but there we go with our first uh, block in. So we've got the length I guess two blocks along. And then the width is five blocks along. So the z-axis is this longer side. And then the x-axis is this shorter side. And remember, y-axis is looking up and down. So we've gone just as is. We've built at ground level. So that's the first step. Let's do step number two now. It's very similar code. So it's mc.setBlocks. And again, we just need to put our starting coordinates in. So this time, instead of x minus 2, it's going to be x minus 1. So instead of being two blocks across here, we're just going to be one block. So x minus 1. Um, after that, we're just going to do y and z, x. Oops. Now this time, the y is going to be plus 1. We're going to go up 1 in the air, so we can build it on top of what we've already got. And to finish off with the Z, it's going to be the same as before, Z plus 5. So it's 5 blocks wide. Don't forget to put a comma and then number 4 at the end, which tells us we're using cobblestone for this next step. And I might put in a comment that says step 2. If we give that a run, we should see, hopefully, two steps appearing. It looks like it's going to because I can't see myself, but there's our second step. And we can actually jump up on these just by walking straight into them. So we've got the two steps built. What we're going to do now is actually build the bridge itself that goes across the water. Okay, so let's do the next line of code. And again, it looks somewhat similar to what we've already done. So we're going to do mc.setBlocks. We'll put our starting position in, which is going to be x, y plus 2. And we're going two blocks up in the air now, so we're building on top of the stairs that we've already got. Uh, y plus 2, and then we're going to do Z, and then our finishing positions will be X plus 25. So it's going to be 25 um, blocks long. So that's, that'll get us to the other side of the lake. We'll stick with Y where it is at the moment. Actually, no, Y plus 2, sorry, because we're up in the air. I forgot about that. And the Z plus 5 again to finish off with. That means our bridge is the exact same width as our steps, 5 blocks wide. We can then put a comment in that says, uh, what will say, top of bridge. 
Let's give that a run. As we run it, it'll clear the world again and we start from scratch. It'll build straight on top of me. If I step back, oops, we can't see anything yet. I must have left a number out. Let's have a look. Oh, yep. Yeah. I forgot to put in the cobblestone number. So don't forget you need the number four at the end there. Let me just try running that one more time. I knew I'd forgotten something when it didn't appear. There we go. So now we've got our two steps. If I can get this flying going, I can fly across the other side. And we can see we've got a majority of our bridge done now. So what we need to do now is just finish that off. So it's very laggy, this program. Okay, there we go. So now back to my coding. Let's have a look. We need to do two more lines of code just to finish those last two steps. So again, we're going to do mc.setBlocks. We'll do x plus 25 because we're now over the other side of the water. So we're... That's why the x is plus 25. y is going to be the same, z is going to be the same, x is going to be the same for now. Actually, no, we might do x plus 26. Okay, we're going to come off the bridge one extra block. y plus 1, so we're one block up in the air. z plus 5, and then put number 4 at the end to say that we're doing the cobblestone. We'll call this step 3. I guess I better run this and show you what it's doing. Oops, I've just sunk, but if I just jump out over here, look over the other side, you can see we've got. Oh, geez, I'm having a shocker here with all this lag, but you can see we've got this third step in now. We just need one more to finish things off. And then we should have our finished bridge. Okay, there we go. So finally got over that lag and we can see what's happening there now. So we'll just put in this final step and then we should be done. So back over to Mew. Let's write mc.setBlocks. Now open your brackets and do x plus 27, y, z, x plus 27 again y z plus five and make sure you put the number four at the end to say we're doing cobblestone put in a comment that says step four and i think that'll do us hopefully i've got that in right um no doubt i've made a mistake somewhere but we'll see how we go let's give that a run so jumping back i don't want to go in the water this time so we've got our two steps there run around this other side you can see we've got our two steps on the other side too so standing from a distance that looks pretty good if you wanted to you can go and test it out you don't have to jump onto this you should be able to just walk straight into the steps and it will just bounce you up onto the bridge which is all good and you should be able to fall in the water awesome so that is our tutorial i guess the first of the more complex structures on how to build a bridge i'll catch you in the next video where we're going to make something even a little bit more tricky than this